for keep trying and failing to articulate. What's up, sons? It's Blindride with Savage Tech once again, and this is quite possibly the most difficult video I've done in quite some time, but we're gonna talk about the LTT video for NiceHash QuickMiner, which was a sponsored video that released on his channel today. Originally, we were going to show you guys how to set up a Ravencoin node with a sweet little Raspberry Pi, but that video will wait for tomorrow. Hit the sub and notification bell if you're interested in that one. But before we get into this, here's a word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is myself. To support the channel, click the join button down below and you will be able to access our privately hosted Rocket Chat. Selecting the $1.99 option will get you access and after that you just need to head on over to the membership tab, scroll down and expand out your membership perks and find the section for connecting on social media. In that section there will be a secret registration URL for Rocket Chat where you can sign up and enjoy talking with other cryptocurrency enthusiasts and miners without scammers, spammers, or bots. Yes, yes, yes. The sponsor today is myself, primarily due to the fact that we did have a sponsor role ready for this video. However, I don't think that it is currently fair to add any other entity to, of course, a nice hash video from Son of a Tech. As you guys know, I have been vocally against nice hash for various reasons, primarily due to the fact that I have been in cryptocurrency mining for a while, and I have been aware of pretty much all of the drama that goes on with NiceHash all the time. And I am very cautious when talking to my users about using it because I don't want to point them in the wrong direction. But that being said, I think Linus did a great job on this video. He covered quite a few things that were worrisome for a lot of people, like the viruses, as well as the degradation of the hardware and how to basically use the quick minor tuning, which is awesome. By the way, I think that whole development process for the tuning of the GPUs is pretty slick by NiceHash. So all that aside, that's pretty good. I don't think that there's anything necessarily wrong about the video. He even talks about ETH 2.0, which is why you have the clickbait of mine now while it's still profitable. I think we'll be okay. I think mining, as far as like GPU mining goes, it's gonna continue to be profitable as long as the bull runs going for even other altcoins like Cortex, Conflux, Ravencoin, so on and so forth. We've talked about all those and how to mine those on this channel if you're interested in that. You can also still use the NiceHash Fat Miner and you need to be clear on what the difference is between the Fat Miner is and that's why I'm gonna name it the full software package and the NiceHash Quick Miner. NiceHash Quick Miner, as stated by Linus, only supports the Ethereum Ha or hash algorithm, right? So the dagger hash amido. Now you can still download the full software package to maximize your profits on your gaming system. But whenever you do that, of course, you're going to have to worry about the miners being flagged as antivirus. And that means that you have to basically allow that entire software package through your antivirus and then like i've said before that can allow for other malicious material to come in with it so as always when mining on windows 10 i recommend not having any financial data or personal information i think this still goes the same for me if we're talking about nice hash quick miner because pretty much all it is is excavator which is their proprietary mining software has been signed now, what signing means is essentially that they have put their name behind it, they have their personal information on that miner, and it has been registered. Basically, think of it as, I don't know, registering a weapon. You can still register a weapon, and it can still be used for bad things or good things. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're always using it for good things, okay? It does make it easier for you to basically keep the antivirus running and not have that pop up, so there's a positive there. Now, maybe the, the whole gun analogy is a little extreme. What are the possibilities of things that NiceHash could do with the miner or the software package? Pretty much not. I don't think they would do anything more than adjust dev fees, which there's no dev fees, of course, in Excavator, so just to be clear on that. Or they could point the rig wherever they want. Now, because you are pointed to the NiceHash proxy, you don't have to just worry about them pointing it wherever they want, but you have to worry about people that are renting the power pointing it at wherever they want. Now you might not be worried about that, 
but there is a lot of stuff going on with Ethereum and EIP-1559, as well as the threat of the 51% attack if the hash rate drops off sharply in July when they move to London or they fork to London, add the difficulty bomb in, and then of course, add in EIP-1559. For the uninitiated, what that's gonna do is decrease profits potentially, which means you would see a sharp decline in hash rate. And if there's a sharp decline in hash rate, it could compromise the security of Ethereum in general. And attackers would most likely use a service like NiceHash to aim it at whatever they want to perform these attacks. So there is a whole other video we could talk about there. Now, to the point of signing, it is quite curious that we had this big blow up between Phoenix Miner and NiceHash last weekend. Now, if you guys recall, essentially what happened is that from the best we could tell is Mega took down the miner downloads for pretty much all miners off of their website. When this happened, of course, the Bitcoin talk download for most miners went away. At this time, it appeared that NiceHash used this as an opportunity to attack Phoenix Miner and say that they had basically not had a valid version of their miner up on the internet for download. And while that was kind of true, it was disingenuous because we were not taking into account or they were not taking into account the mega situation. Now that blew up into a whole bunch of other stuff and we got some more information from Phoenix Miner that is super curious too, because all this plays in in this weird timeline. If you take a look at Phoenix Miner dev responses, essentially what you can see here without like going into too much detail is that NiceHass was trying to push Phoenix Miner into signing their code. To which Phoenix Miner devs replied and said they do not feel comfortable with signing their code at this time, primarily due to the fact that on the last release of Claymore, which they had signed, Claymore essentially disappeared. That's pretty much all you need to know. NiceHash was pushing them to sign it. I think they wanted this in their quick miner because that kind of lines up with their development scheme here and of at least the NiceHash quick miner. So they rolled back to NiceHash quick miner. Will your performance be as good on NiceHash quick miner or excavator as it would be on Phoenix miner? Probably not. And at the end of the day, we have seen better performance from different mining applications other than Excavator. But for convenience, of course, there is that argument and it being signed once again. All right, so I wanted to bring that up because you guys need to understand that NiceHash is doing a lot of stuff kind of to push this new NiceHash quick miner. And then we need to talk about why I don't trust NiceHash. And once again, this really comes down to actions like they had of course with or interactions that they've had with of course phoenix miner here it's all very sketch the the smear campaign was pretty disgusting i'm not pretty i'm not very happy with that and then if we really get into it we have to talk about the hack now linus mentioned the hack and that they paid it back but what they aren't really discussing with you guys is the payback timing so when NiceHash was hacked, Bitcoin was between seventeen and twenty thousand dollars per Bitcoin. And the only thing that sits really in, of course, the NiceHash wallets is Bitcoin. The payback time, like we mentioned before, that we talked about, was when Bitcoin was around four to six thousand dollars. So, in theory, of course, there is a lot of missing money there as far as fiat value that was extracted out of it. And there's no telling if NiceHash would actually do this again. Of course, I highly doubt it because I think you can fool me once, that whole saying, fool me twice, shame on me. But I mean, maybe they fool you twice and it's shame on you. And that's why I'm staying away from it, right? But I just want to make it clear that this is these are practices that have happened in and around NiceHash quite a lot. You also need to keep into account that NiceHash founder was charged with fraud and racketeering back in 2019. And so 
when we're really looking at the validity of a project and the founders of a project, you need to keep these things into account and stay very, very cautious when working around it. And yes, I am not getting all worked up like I have in the past because I really want you guys to listen and hear me here that these are the valid concerns that a lot of people have with NiceHash. Now, the next thing that you need to take into account is that they have upped the withdrawal limits as well as the fee percentages for getting your Bitcoin to your own wallet address. Once again, a very good point that Linus brought up was using a hardware wallet. What he failed to do was give you a picture of a real hardware wallet. I think it was a paper wallet, one of the etched ones. Then I think there was like a, a Yubi key on there. It was a mess. If you guys would like to purchase a real hardware wallet, you can check out my affiliate link for Trezor down in the description below. And that would be a hardware wallet that you would want to use. And then the paper wallet from Linus's links is fine as well. If you would like to go that route, the YubiKey is not a hardware wallet. If you guys want to use a YubiKey though, I highly recommend it. It's a hardware multi-factor authentication device. I wanted to clear that up because it's very important that you guys understand the differences between all those. But as you can see here, we have to get out if we're mining to our own Bitcoin wallet address a minimum of 0.001 BTC which is about $70 US right now as we're talking with a service fee of 5% and a payout only every Wednesday while if you do to the internal wallet address the service fee is 2% and the payout schedule is every four hours and it's like 0.00001 BTC now the thing here is they really want you to deposit to the internal wallet address and then wait till you have the minimum to pull out from NiceHash and then obviously tacking on a heftier fee for you to pull it out. The problem here is that is encouraging people to keep money in NiceHash and if I'm wanting to keep people get people to keep their money in NiceHash and not just tacking on a service fee for the mining or something along those lines, then I'm going to be cautious around what's going on here. Is the, where is the Bitcoin being held? Is it Gemini? What are they, are they doing anything else with it? Are they leveraging it somewhere else? Well, I mean, things like, you know, we come to mine or services, not exact, they wouldn't use BlockFi, but like BlockFi or so on, leveraging that somewhere else. Um, this comes down to the third party issue that we've talked about before that because you have a third party here You're putting your trust in this third party and then you have to ask yourself is this third party something you should trust and Frankly because of their track record my answer would be no. So I I kind of feel a, a little frustrated that that it, this is getting pushed so hard without the obvious cautionary tales that need to be told at this point. So I'm here to give you guys the cautionary, cautionary tales so that you guys are aware. Once again, if you're going to mine the nice hash, pull out your Bitcoin and put it in a hardware wallet or a wallet with keys you control as much as possible while also realizing that they are upping those limits pretty pretty frequently. So it's gonna be more and more difficult to do. As far as Linus's coverage, I think that it was good. Um, I am a little worried about that being a sponsored thing. And then finally, we have to talk about the difficulty of the network going up. So NiceHash posted a tweet earlier today, basically saying that now with the launch of the LTT video, that they are experiencing a heavy load on their website and obviously for the download of the NiceHash Quick Miner. This is to be expected. He has a ton of followers and a lot of people are just gonna go do it. What does this mean for Ethereum? This means for Ethereum right now that everybody that is mining, you need to keep in mind that your profits are probably going to go significantly down as the amount of people on the network goes up and the difficulty goes up. So be prepared for that in your mining profits here over the next few days and then in addition to that, with it being so close to EIP 1559 and the diff bomb, 
We need to be very cautious in what our holdings in Ethereum are and how that's going to play out because even the devs have mentioned that that is kind of one of the attack vectors that they are taking into consideration. And that is, once again, nothing to do with the home miners. We, I'm not saying that anybody should do that either. In fact, don't do that. What I'm saying is that's a valid security concern that's coming up. And if there's more power on NiceHash to be manipulated, then you also need to take into account that it is more likely that something could uh, end up harming Ethereum at this point. It's really super interesting. This timeline is getting like a like a like a whole superhero story of some weird crypto pirates going on. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm super interested in the ending of this. Let me know what you guys think. I'll see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here. Or, of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.